Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage we've got part two of our resilvering and restoring the plastic reflectors saga for XK headlights. And in this episode we're looking at the various solvents you might use to release the glass from the reflector. So when I was cleaning the lens up just a little bit yesterday, I pulled this off. This is just a piece of sealant and it's set. It's semi-flexible. I could snap it, um, but it was holding the lens, the glass to the plastic very, very effectively has no stickiness to it so it's a setting type of sealant because i have a couple of lengths of this the silver on the back by the way is just the um vapor aluminization or chrome plating has but has come off with it um what i can do is cut up little sections of this and then do experiments on how to dissolve it So if I turn it into just over one centimeter chunks, there's six lengths of that. So I can do experiments on trying to dissolve this. The other challenge we got is of course, we don't want to dissolve the plastic. So I need some samples of that too. So on the underside of the lamp, I've got this area here, which serves no function on my light, but serves a function if you've got um, power wash jets that pop out the front. So what I can do is cut off some small pieces of this as my sample of the headlight material. And put a new blade in my knife, I think. These are good knives if you've not got a, a standing knife or box cutter or utility knife. Insert your correct name for your territory. But um, yeah, I, I like it because it's got a very good safe handle rubber. Um, and the blade change is as easy as push all the way forward. There's a magnet. Locates on a little dowel. Pull it back. And there's a sort of bay in it thing meaning you can go forwards and backwards nicely detents into the stop uh, closed position press it down to move forward but you can slide it over to the right and forward again to change the blade so I'm a big fan of that and it does hold uh, spare blades I'm just using ones out of the packet because I've got them there so yeah, just just a really good um, ergonomic knife. That's a Stanley Fat Max. No doubt, it'd be called something else where you live. All I need is sufficient where I can tell if it's been softened. by the substances I'm applying. Okay, so now I'm gonna put on my gloves. These are nitrile gloves, not latex, because they're a little more resistant to chemicals. I shan't be spreading chemicals on myself, but splashes and all that. Now I've got my glasses on and I've got a series of little tins 
They're all perfectly clean, never been used for anything. And my idea is to use a selection of solvents of one form or another to see what I can use in future to dissolve this glue. Um, and I'm on purpose using things which are readily available around the average home or garage. Maybe not the brand names I'm using or in the formats I'm using, but if I find something that works, you guys should be able to replicate it. So we're going to go for six things. I'm going to move through a scale from least likely to dissolve this to most likely to dissolve this. But as we go through that scale, we're also more and more likely to affect the plastics. So we're going to start with one which we already tried. Um, because although it didn't do the job, who's to say left longer or used more... Uh, in more volume it might have done and that is white spirit now, I think white spirit might be called different things in different places it is basically a brush cleaner typically um, clean up um, solvent or an oil based paint with it but it's quite mild and is quite unlikely to affect plastic so we got some in there, and to drop in a bit of sealant. We're also going to drop in a sample of the headlight plastic. Um, I'm not going to seal the lid because gases, but I'm just going to put a small turn on it. And I've got my chalk markers, and this one is. white spirit next in my scale of lightliness um, I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol this is 70% alcohol basically something that I've always got around me it's great for cleaning off um, materials and leaving them ready for paint or ready for gluing because it leaves no residue behind it's very effective at dissolving um, sticky substances this one you see IPA 7030 so 70% pure alcohol so if this was still soft I would say the isopropyl alcohol would definitely do the job as it's semi-set it's still flexible but it's it's not gooey at room temperature anyway I'm not sure so we'll pop the lid on loosely next one along is one I'm kind of rooting for because it'd be so convenient if it did work and that is Brake cleaner. Now, why do I want this to work so much? Because brake cleaner is not necessarily expensive. Most people have got some knocking around in the garage and it's easy to apply because if it's an aerosol format, you can squirt it onto the seal, into the gaps and get a lot done. So I'm hoping that this is gonna be a really good solution. So let's squirt him in. So let's get on with this before it has evaporated. Pop that in there, that in there. Pretty sure this isn't going to harm the plastics because you often have plastic items such as um, wheel speed sensors or ABS sensors around brakes. Brake cleaner. Next, we're going to go on to one from the home rather than the garage. Nail polish remover. Now, nail polish remover is obviously something you can dip your fingers in. You wouldn't want to immerse them in it forever. But it does contain acetone, as a rule. And acetone is very good at dissolving things. 
but it will dissolve plastics generally. Um, you can even use acetone to mix with plastics such as ABS to make a sort of slurry that you can use as a glue. So this is getting quite aggressive at this stage, but I don't know how it's going to affect the sealant. So in with a piece of sealant, in with a piece of plastic, on with the lid, And nail, polish, remover. Not sure which of these two is going to be more aggressive, so we'll just go for it. Um, I'm going to use dot four brake fluid. Now, neat brake fluid will strip paint. It's also relatively thick, it's an oil, so it lingers and stays where you put it. It is stored in a plastic container typically, so instincts are it's not the most aggressive when it comes to plastics. Just get that to sink, there you go. But a lot of people will mix brake fluid with other liquids bit of petrol or diesel to make a really good penetrating oil or to use as a sticky stuff remover. There we go. And our last one <coughs> is a very strong brush cleaner or thinner. This is the Hammerite brand one. Um, and if you've used Hammerite paint, you'll know that if you uh, let, it, let the Hammerite dry too much on your brush, then you ain't getting it back off. This stuff will get it off, which tells you how strong it is. Also, it only comes in a metal tin. So again, great for strength. Maybe means it's not going to be great with our plastic. But let's find out. And this is the reason I went and found the little tins, actually. The others I thought probably get away with a plastic container. This one, I'm pretty sure it would have ate them. In goes sealant. In goes the plastic. And all I'm going to put on there is strong thinners. So there are our mixes. Um, I did leave all the lids ajar, so to speak, just because in case there was any reactions and it gassed, I didn't want them burping or exploding. But what I'm going to do now with each one is seal them up and give them a good agitate. There are no excuses for things not to start reacting. And I'm going to come back to these in just five minutes to open the lids, give them a little prod, and then we'll rest the lids back on and leave them for a significant period of time. Well, after many hours, try 10, uh, I've been through the containers again. None of them have dissolved the sealant. However, we have got a couple of small results that are worthy of note. Strong thinners which is this container has resulted in significant softening of the sealant such that I'm pretty sure it would give a good start to um, releasing the glass. The plastic is unaffected. A 
the other one that's interesting and with the nail polish remover we've got it may be a little softer to be fair but so is the plastic um, it's not dissolved but it's malleable now whereas the old was a brittle so it's the presence of acetone in this that is starting to degrade the plastic so not probably the best idea to use nail polish remover on the headlights because you have to leave it on for quite some time in order to soften the sealant and the effect of that would definitely be to soften the plastics. So the strong thinners is our number one contender at the moment for maybe a pre-treatment. Soak the seal in strong thinners and then I would use the hairdryer to prise everything off using heat as well. Let's have a little look at the, how the petrol experiment went. This has been on for 12 hours. Oh, very soft, plastic, pretty much unaffected. I'm not kidding, the screwdriver, I don't know how well this comes across. Just straight through. Um, it's not turn to a liquid or anything like that but this is so flimsy and it's now crumbling yeah I mean that that is completely degraded if I get a bit of seal for you so here's a piece that I've just peeled off the headlight literally now I can twist it. If I try to tear it like I was doing before, nothing's really happening. I mean, it really is like I'm going to pull up until it breaks now. <coughs> he says, ah, nope. And I've got that same screwdriver, put it through the thinnest part. Let's do the same thing. If, if I just push down on it, and just about get it to emboss it enough to pick up but it's not going through and there's a really pointy screwdriver I'm about to put I reckon five kilos or more on that to get it to nearly go through compared to hundred grams maybe you know this is between my fingers I just push through if I put that between my fingers <laughs> I would be at risk of stabbing myself to push through so petrol is the answer no effect on the plastics but heavily degrades the seal. If your headlight like mine is completely ruined, <laughs> then pouring petrol in would degrade the seal without damaging the plastics and you'd be able to get it off really easily then with a hairdryer. Or you could just apply it around the edges of the seal if you want to be a bit neater and you're not really interested in trying to re-chrome or refinish the insides of your headlights. This would be the only bit I'd worry about different material I'll have to maybe do some other experiments to see if that would be damaged at all by petrol but the rest of it fill it with petrol empty it out use a hairdryer to warm it up and then pull the glass off I reckon is the answer I'll try that in another video on the other headlight so what have we learned so far we've learned that the sealant used on the headlights of the XKA is extremely um, resistant to chemical attack, which you would hope so for 99.99% of the time. For the 1% of the time when you're trying to get the things off, uh, not so good. Um, they do 
degrade with heat and it seems to be about the 80 degrees centigrade mark at which the headlights begin to lose their stick between glass and plastic. Remember that the headlamps are glass. They're one of the last cars to have glass headlights. So um, the use of hard metal or pointy tools to be done with extraordinary care, plastic wherever possible. And I'm gonna part this one here before trying to remove the second headlight glass in a slightly more organized, controlled method. See you soon. If you're enjoying our channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.